There you go, this is a little project that I need to do. It will all become apparent later down the line, but uh, for now we need to modify this garden trailer. It's uh, quite beat up, but we can uh, repurpose it. I've already fitted, ages ago, I fitted these puncture-proof wheels, just because I was fed up of getting punctures. And I think at the time I changed like the axles because the original spindle things were just flimsy. Yeah, it's like one of these cheap eBay garden cart things, so. So I've just took the sides off and uh, flipped it upside down because this is this is the way I need it for what I'm doing. You can see I've just I can't remember what the original spindles looked like, but they, I know they were crap, and I, that's why I changed them and did this. Uh, and at the front I used a bit of 20 mil box. I think I welded studs on the end and then bolted the wheel straight on. No steering, so it was terrible, but I was using it to like haul loads of like timber and firewood around, which was really, really heavy. And I think it originally steered from the bit that you towed it with or something. It was, it was a terrible system, but this, although didn't tow very well because it had no steering, it was just handled the weight that I was putting in it. And this is the same cart that, believe it or not, when I took the the body off of the chassis on the rat rod, I needed to move it from my old garage where we used to live into like a, a portable gazebo. That was the only place I could store the body whilst I worked on the chassis. And we actually put the body on this trailer and pushed it into the gazebo. I don't know what this is rated for, it's probably like, I don't know, 150 kilos or something, but it, um, it didn't collapse under the weight of that, so it's served me well, this trailer, and uh, it's going to serve me well again, because we're going to modify it for a little something that I've got coming up, which you'll see in a future video, so now I'm just going to crack on and modify this and film it as I go, so I thought you guys could hang out with me while we chop stuff up and well bits of metal together.
Picture frames of a broken home Mama's crying on the telephone Crying now cause the money's gone It always seems like there's something wrong This I swear Been sitting here thinking, did my whole world just disappear? I feel like I'm tired of you. Bloody knuckles, broken picture frame, shattered childhood memories. This I swear is more than I can bear. All your greed took everything from everyone. Had a metal delivery, so now we can carry on with this trailer. Weird creation thing. Got some uh, 25 or 20 mil angle iron, which the idea being that creates a frame like so. I'm going to cut the corners at 45 degrees. And then a piece of 18 mil structural ply will go in there as the base. And then this will weld onto here. The axle will be sort of pivoted on the underside of that piece. And this is 20 mil. And we'll build a sort of triangulation triangulated bit, which will go to a flat bar with a riser and a flat bar which will attach to the tractor and that will give me some degree of steering. If I want more steering, because it will sort of be pivoted there, it will collide like so, so it won't be a particularly tight angle, but if I need more steering I'll just cut and extend this axle will make it wider. That's the general plan. So I'm going to get these 45 degrees cut and then we can get those welded onto the frame. angles cut that was painfuler than it needed to be because the blade on the uh, saw is blunt as you may have seen so I need to order a new one of those I think and we'll get these tacked on and then on to the next bit all tacked on. Just done sections in various places, didn't need to be a full bead all the way along. And I think I am going to widen this axle just because 
when it turns, we're going to hit, the tyre's going to hit on the side there. Um, and I think I would like a little bit tighter lock on it. the width that it was before and if I just move these out of the way this is sort of the pivot point here and we sort of had this much lock before it hits the sides but now we move it out a little bit something like Something like that. Now we've got much tighter lock. I won't weld it until I've made it pivot on the, the frame and then I can you know, sort of work out exactly what width I want it and then I can weld it up. So that's the next step. Right, I've got sort of the extension bit welded on and uh, put some bracing in because I stood on the corners because all the weights pivoted sort of here and this thickness bit here is, is not very thick so it was flexing a little bit so I put this sort of scrap piece of uh, angle iron in and welded that in to the new angle iron that I put on the back as well and then braced it here. Hold on, turn it around so you can see it. There we go. So if I just put this, I'll lay it out on the floor of the steering and it'll all make sense. There we go, I've just got it uh, sort of laid out how it's gonna be. And what I was doing is I was pushing here and here my body weight and that was flexing and now a lot of that's gone. And I don't mind that I'm making it quite a long cut because the thing that's going on it is uh, 1380 mil like that. so if I put a Tape measure's starting just past there. And that's 1300 where my thumb is, so we're, we're plenty big enough. The, the thing that's going on has got two feet, which I haven't been able to get the measurement, but I'm hoping feet fit within, or aren't any wider than 90 apart. So the feet, this will have wood on, and the feet will go on this base, but the the rest of it overhangs, which is fine, so but I haven't been able to get the measurements, so I'm just fingers crossed on that. Well, I've got the uh, front axle bolted on. Still yet to weld these on, um, just so that now it's on, you can see I can turn it and decide how much steering angle I want. At the moment I've got this set as a distance 7 inches either side. I think that's a pretty good angle. And for stability I'm 70 kilos and I'm going to stand right on the front corner on one side and it didn't tip over. There's a little bit of movement. There's a lot of there's a lot of um, you know, that's that bolt is where all the the force is going through, but that's an M10 and um, it's pretty tight. So but the fact that I can stand one footed on the corner, put all 70 kilos on one corner, and it not want to rip itself in half seems to be okay. 
So uh, I've been busy welding and uh, I didn't film much just because I was just cracking on and getting it done. And I've got the uh, sort of the tow hitch done. I decided to weld it on here rather than out here because I still haven't welded these on. And I was thinking maybe I could drill a couple of holes, put bolts through, and then I could adjust the width accordingly. I'll probably adjust it once and never change it ever again, but this is what's going to be towing it. And that just slots on there nicely. I've got two bolts, holes. It originally had one, but Obviously one will pivot and two will keep this fixed. So I'm not sure how it will behave. And um, that's why I've got two. So if two locks everything up, I'll just use one. And if one's too much steering, I'll put two in. So I've got options. Same with the, the width for the wheels, I've got options. So there we go. That's the floor made, bolted together. Made two bits. So there's one on this side. That's like 36 mil of metal, and it sandwiches the lips of the angle iron. And I bolted the steering arms, or steering, you know, shaft. And uh, I've got two adjustments. So that's that was the one that was sort of seven inches, and this one sort of about six inches. So I can change my angle accordingly. Just flipped it the right way up. Should do the job. So the next thing to do is take it all apart and stick some paint on it. Not sure what colour it will be. Whatever I have lying around. I have a feeling it's gonna be this dodgy green color that I've got. There we go. Olive drab matte. So I reckon some zinc primer and some drab olive. Well, we've done a few coats, uh, found another can of the silver uh, zinc primer. So we've done a couple of coats of that and then we sprayed whatever drab olive we had on there, which was not a lot, <laughs> so it's a bit patchy. But, uh, had another look on the shelf and I found this which is uh, glass three and four chassis paint in black and that was quite thick I've just added a load of thinners to it and uh, mixing that together I'm gonna whack that in this chassis gun which has got some remnants of um, rust encapsulator primer paint which I've been using recently to do Another project. So a combination of um, I don't know what brown, <laughs> maybe black. Just spray that on. Let's see what it comes out like. I'm not worried about really how it looks. I just want to put some paint on it. So there we go, all painted and put back together. The, uh, the 
combination of paints that I had came out all right. Yeah, I'm not too worried, just, just protect it a bit, you know, stop it rusting immediately like bare metal would. It's obviously going to get some knocks and chips over its abusive life that it's probably going to have. But... There we go.